wellnesscouch.com, streaming wellness into your lives. You're listening to A Quirky Journey, the healthy family podcast with your hosts, Joe Witten and Fuad Kassab. Okay, so this podcast today is with David Ajus, and he is a canine nutritionist who is a good friend of Kale Brock's. That's how I met David. And um, he, if you go onto his Facebook page and his Instagram, you'll see lots of photos and ideas and tips and things for, for feeding your dog well. And um, he also has parrots and birds, and he mentions a little bit about that as well. Um, but we... We seem to get a lot of questions about this. So um, I said to Fuad, we really should interview him. So I put up on Facebook, does anyone have questions for David? And oh my goodness, <laughs> I had like pages of questions. And so we've spoken on this interview for probably a bit over an hour talking through all the questions and we didn't quite get them all done. But I think we've covered um, the main subjects and you can always go onto David's page if there's a question that you have that didn't get answered go onto his Facebook page or Instagram and ask on there he's happy to chat about all this um, and there's some useful links in the show notes um, one of the things he talks about is fermented foods for your dog and there's a little recipe there that you can click through to um, that will that he can that he's given us that's um, fermented seeds believe it or not, because apparently they awesome. need to have a little bit of seeds in their diet as well. So he said, you know, wow. just do it all in one. So, yeah, I learned heaps and my dog is going to be very happy with all the things I learned. So I hope you guys all enjoy it and um, do contact him through his social media if you've got any questions. Uh, the links will be in the show notes. Yep. But before we go on to the show, we've got some classes coming up in oh, yes. uh, Echuca in December. Woo. Uh, what, which date? Okay, Chuk is the 4th of December um, in the yep. evening at Dung, Dungula Event Centre. And Wonderful. Melbourne, are we sure what Melbourne is yet? Not yet. I think it's the, but it's the Melbourne 6th. Melbourne will be on the 6th, but yep. uh, keep an eye out on the website or our Facebook page. A newsletter will let you know from there. There's an events tab on the Yep, on and the blog. Brisbane's coming up in February. Uh, go and book your tickets early. Make sure that you get your spots. Um, you'll, be, you'll be glad to know I've had lots of messages from people that came to my classes in Brisbane the other day saying, as soon as I got home, I booked into the ones for February. Yeah, how cool is that? <laughs> yeah, because they loved it and they want to they they hear more. Yeah. I said, you'll, you'll hear lots more um, on in our big seminars because they're longer yeah. and we can fit more in and also you'll have full out there so it'll be a lot more fun and they're like we're coming <laughs> absolutely i mean it's, those seminars are the best really they're they just so much fun and we love so them. informative and they're just you know you'll get pumped up you by will. by going there just you'll feel so motivated to go home and, and it, make so a much, change in your life it's so much different than just going online and reading something to be in a room full of people um discussing things and learning from each other and and the the um uh the community you know you've got your community there and it's Absolutely. just totally different isn't it than just yeah. reading well, something so come uh, and and we're there too so you and can hang out with us that's right so that's the best bit we can take silly selfies and stuff which we always do which we always do <laughs> so guys um enjoy the show Hi everyone, welcome to A Quirky Journey. It's great to have David with us today, who is a canine nutritionist. Welcome, David. Hey, Joe. So good to have you. We have a lot of questions for you. <laughs> no worries. Um, we, I have had a few questions on the Quirky Cooking Facebook page and also in the chat group um, now and then about dogs and how to feed them and um, just questions because people know that you know, it's not just, obviously, it's not just human beings that need a whole food traditional diet. It's also our pets. Um, yeah. And we, we really want to talk about that today. Yeah, most definitely. And the more people start researching into their own health and, and have dogs at home, the more they realize yeah. what's going on with their dog's diet as well. well That's how I started. Of, yeah. And I think it's it's taken me a while just because... I'm new at this dog thing. We've had our dog for about three, mm. three years. But it's also um, when you're doing 
a difficult kind of a diet like we've been on the gaps diet and it's so much work you sort of go the dog can wait <laughs> but yeah, then I you know really we we do try and you know give him some veggies and broth and things like that but I definitely yep. feel like we need to improve and um, having seen so many questions on the groups I just thought you would be a great person to get in so for those of you who don't know David um, he's a good friend of Kale Brock's who's also a friend of ours and that's how I found out about you. Um, yeah. Saw your amazing photos of the food that you feed your dogs and your <laughs> birds. And I was very impressed. And I was like, okay, obviously I need to step up the game here. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, I, see, I love posting those sorts of photos yeah, because it, it does good. inspire others. And it, it's... Um, it looks so colourful and I'm just like, oh. Yeah, definitely. You, yeah, you, and that's, the difference and that's, and that's, between that and packet food. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, definitely. Mm. It, you don't need to even think about what's in it. You just look at it and go, yeah, I know that that would be better. It's real food. Yeah, exactly. So um, what I would like to just ask you first, this actually wasn't in the questions that I sent you, but... Um, trick question. No. Have you heard much <laughs> about um, how good it is for kids' gut health and immunity to have a dog in the house? I actually, yeah, I have actually, um, especially with kids that have, um, even kids that have um, autism or disabilities because yeah. it's um, obviously having a dog it makes you feel happy. It um, lifts those yeah, so the serotonin yep. levels and your the, yep. the feel good feel good hormones in your body. Yeah. So I had I definitely have seen like, the research behind it, and it's I think it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. That, um, mm. And they they talk about the hygiene hypothesis that um, you know we got very obsessive about cleaning and then um, killed all the good bacteria as well as the bad, and then that's yeah. really affected our children's gut health. And um, having a dog in the home actually helps you to have more of the bacteria <laughs> oh, obviously <laughs> oh, definitely yeah if you mm. if you see half the stuff that my dog sometimes gets into you, <laughs> you, you do realize that there, there would be plethora of different you've bacteria got, you've around. got more bacteria yeah. than than people without dogs <laughs> yeah that's it but it's it really fascinates me i've heard that there's research showing that it helps with allergies and asthma in kids yeah. Um, yep, I yeah, I, be, I believe that. It, it, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's so it's um it's definitely very uh, uh, beneficial even for um to help with kids um learning and stuff. Um oh, yeah. I've seen I've seen that um I mean I I have a I have a greyhound that's the type okay. of dog that I have. Yep. And um there are some schools that are now um, accepting people to come in uh, with their dogs and oh. and rescue greyhounds in particular. And they're reading to the kids with these with these dogs, so oh. the kids actually have more motivation and more confidence to, yes. to read their books because they've got another companion with them that just sits there and, and listens. As, oh, mm. I love that. That's yeah. really special. Um, we also have seen a rise of um, dogs in nursing homes, so I know that's, that they. That's right. Yeah, they also use. I know the one that's local here has. Um, a couple of pets and it's really lovely I think it's so important I said to by the way Fuad's not on the show today guys because um, he's busy filming a cooking video today um, but he actually doesn't have a dog so I said to him look I'll buy your kids a dog for Christmas and he was like don't you dare you won't be my friend if you do that <laughs> and I said yeah but your kids will love me <laughs> so apparently I'm not allowed to buy his kids a dog for the Christmas present but oh, really? maybe if I just give him these you know, all the facts and figures about how good it is for your kids. Maybe it'll change yeah, your mind. <laughs> that's it. Or maybe not. But there's <laughs> lots of listeners out there. We know you love your dogs and you've asked us lots and lots of questions um, for this show today. So, but we might just get you to um, share your story first, David, um, you know, what Definitely. you do and why. That would be great. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I guess uh, my a story, my journey started, oh, going back 10 years ago now, mm -hmm. um, I um, was managing a pet food store and um, during that time, I was going through certain health issues myself. Um, um, I popped a disc in my back, so um, yeah, I was Ouch. in a lot of pain. Yeah, yeah. I was that typical gym junkie, you know, <laughs> I eating. I was wondering, <laughs> was it <laughs> yeah. weights and yeah. stuff? 
Oh. Deadlift machine. Yeah. I'd, I'd never, I'd never do that again. No. But um, you know, I was eating a typical, you know, low fat diet and protein shakes and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I, I started my health journey and um, my personal trainer at the time, um, Adam Murphy, who's now actually um, is a sports conditioning coach. He he introduced me to um, organic foods, um, more functional styles of moving, and really got me interested in you know eating food that came from the ground or mm-hmm. food that had a mum so <laughs> real holistic foods yeah um, and through that health journey I'd started um, going to organic markets and meeting new people one of the people that I met at these organic markets was kale Brock mm-hmm. listen <laughs> so um back then kale was selling things like goji berries and coconut oil and <laughs> it was he, he and you know, Super Cal food. is such such a loving personality. Yeah. Like we became best mates straight away. And um, when I was t- telling him that I was working in a pet food shop, he said to me, "Oh, well, why don't you start your own healthy dog food?" And I said, "What do you mean? Like, you know, we the, the dog food that we have in the store contains all of the the vitamins and minerals that they need. Someone's already made it for you. <laughs> not even not even thinking that the marketing that's going behind it mm. and." It was through that conversation I had that light bulb moment, moment and yeah. I was thinking, oh my gosh, what is what is happening to our pets? I've been completely like, blinded by mm. by the bombardment of advertisements that we've faced every day. Yeah. So from there, I guess, I started researching, started checking ingredients on the back of pet foods labels and I started to discover what it was that we needed to feed our animals and that was less of the, the processed food that has been marketed to us and more of real wholesome proper food yeah. which they should be eating anyways. Mm. Mm. So I gradually I cultivated my passion both for like human nutrition and and dog nutrition, did a lot of research, a lot of study and I actually developed my own Mm. Uh, raw organic dog food okay. um, that won an award in oh, wow. t- 2013. And this was through the organic markets that, that Kale was still at at the time. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, transitioned my, um, back then, she my border collie, back mm-hmm. then she was, oh, I think, 13 or 14 at the time. Mm-hmm. So I transi- transitioned her onto, onto real food, uh, whole, whole foods. Um, and... That border collie ended up living to be seventeen and a half years old. Wow! And 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 just died from old age. Um, so that's amazing. I I definitely contribute those extra um, years um, to feeding her those those whole foods. Mm. Mm. So um, yeah. From from there, I, I did gain a qualification. So I'd have and and I was uh, regis- become registered through um. An organization called the Holistic Animal Therapy Organization. So, um, That's registered re- through. My daughter would be so interested in this. Where did you oh. study that? I got to ask. It's called the Holistic Animal Therapy Organization. And it's um, yeah. like. Do you Based go- here in Australia. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, and it's, it's more um, based on general nutrition. Mm-hmm. Um, as opposed to different specific types of nutrition because nutrition, right. when you dig deeper into um, canine, canine nutrition, there are people that feed specific, specific styles of food, whether okay, it's yep. um, a prey model raw, which is basically whole whole intact animals with the fur and feathers and wow. and everything. Yeah, there's um, um, – Bath, so biologically yes. appropriate raw food, yep. which, which contains all your veggies and bones and organs and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And there are people that um, also home cook for their dogs, so lightly yep. cooked foods. Um, in my opinion, these are just all different ways of, of feeding. It's like paleo and yes. keto and vegan and yep. FODMAP and, and, and whatever. So each each um, everyone has their own sort of method of feeding that they follow. Yeah. Um, so... After getting my qualification and being registered through the Holistic Animal Therapy Organization, I moved to Wyala 
um, which is a town in um, South Australia. Mm -hmm. I moved here with my wife um, sort of to encourage her career. So she, she moved here as a school teacher. Mm -hmm. So um, I was able to, to leave my workplace at the time and, and move here and open up my own practice here in Wyala, um, which is um, in, which is in conjunction with um, a really good dog food shop here. So mm -hmm. that's that's kind of how my journey happened and and how I came here and here how I'm here today. I've always had dogs in my life. So ever yeah. since I was a kid, we've always had dogs. Uh, we've all, our family have always had a love of animals yeah. and it's just the love that you get from these dogs, that unconditional yeah. love, It's you, you can't explain you it. You can't beat it. Um, <laughs> I, until until I, I have my own my children yeah. and yeah. I, I can't compare anything oh, that's true. I mean, to, to that love. To that, I hope my to kids that aren't love. listening to this going, Mom, <laughs> you love the dog better than us. <laughs> well, my oh, dog obeys me usually. No, I just that's, kidding. That's and and hey, and, and when the when they're puppies, you can leave them home and and, yeah. and, and go out and, and not not have to worry about taking them with you. Oh, my no. my puppy's right beside me now. His name's Peppy, and he's oh, a Maltese hey, cross. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> looking at me, going, "What are you talking about me for, Mum?" Oh, he's well, going to get plenty of good tips in, yeah. in a moment of, on um, how to make healthy, uh, right. yummy dog food. And what's your dog's name? So my dog, is, my dog's name is Lexi. She is um, a rescued greyhound. She's never raced. She, yep. she was just um, unwanted litter, mm -hmm. and um, I've had her since she was nine months old. She is absolutely adorable. I've Such seen a beautiful photos. dog. She's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. yeah def if anyone's looking at um, getting a dog, I'd highly recommend looking at greyhounds, adopting an ex an ex racer. Yeah, there's so so much. And I hate using this word. So much wastage in the oh, it's true in that industry. Yeah, even even with um with racing horses, but we won't, mm. we won't get into ethics and that sort of thing. But uh, yep. so many dogs are um going to waste. It's mm. really I I just can't stress how beautiful these dogs are as are as pets. I, mean, yep. I take her hiking with me. We oh. go to the beach together. We um she's done all of the training, so wow. she, she can. Yeah, very obedient with different cues and oh, um, in commands. And as I said, it's just that love that yeah. dogs give you. You just you can't beat it. Um, I don't know if you know my son's story, Isaac, with all the anxiety and everything. Um, but when he was going through a really hard time, that was one of the things he said. And he said, Mum, I don't know how I would have coped without a dog. <laughs> mm. You know, when they feel really stressed and anxious, just holding onto the dog and cuddling it and patting it and, and having that love from your pet is so important. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. 100% agreeing. Yeah. Very, very good therapy pets <laughs> yeah for sure yeah well if we can go on to a bit of a general discussion of what a whole food diet for dogs looks like then we can sort of drill down to the nitty-gritty but if could you just yeah. give us an idea of you know what you would recommend generally yeah for sure and look it's not rocket science a lot no. of people they they get concerned about balancing issues whether they have mm. The right vitamins and minerals and ratios and that sort of thing, yeah. um, but really, it doesn't. It doesn't take a lot to have um, a well-rounded, balanced diet, like in the bowl for your dog. Mm. Um, definitely, so the main proportion of the dog's diet should be uh, meat, so a good quality meat. Mm -hmm. uh, kangaroo is very easy for us to get here in Australia, mm -hmm. and it's naturally hormone free and antibiotic free because it's all wild yeah um wild mate mm -hmm. so um so ha having a, a um a good quality meat is important that's the main basis of their growth is the protein okay um then some some form of bone or or calcium so mm -hmm. um i'm a really big um a believer of feeding raw bones, raw mm -hmm. meaty bones for calcium. Yeah. They they don't need a lot of it to um, help them with their um, bone development and that sort of thing. So you can feed things like um, chicken wings, chicken frames, mm -hmm. turkey necks. Poultry bones are very soft, so mm -hmm. there is no um, concern with um, um, hurting their teeth. Mm -hmm. so, 
some of the other bones, like marrow bones, for instance, that uh, they are too hard and okay. they can chip and wear down your dog's teeth. And that's where a lot of um, the concern comes from, you know, not feeding your dog's raw bones. Oh, okay. um, yeah. So because they do, they do, they do, and you do see um, charts at your vet office for dogs show. that have chip chip teeth from dogs oh. that are eating bones. But they generally, look, they, they will come from those hard weight bearing bones. So you wouldn't recommend any beef bones, or I well, I, I feed um soft brisket bone because okay. I find yep. I find it's, it's soft enough. Yep. Um, but but definitely leg bones. Um, I I, I would I. I wouldn't recommend it okay. just because it does um, wear down and can chip their teeth. Yep. Save those bones for um, making bone yes. broth. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Definitely. Yeah. And would and obviously never cooked bones. Am I right? No. Okay. No. Yep. They splinter. Yeah. They're in, indigestible, so mm -hmm. they'll just go in the same way as they came out. Yeah. They're very dangerous. Definitely, yeah. I wouldn't risk it. Not even with not even with um, poultry bones. No. No. Um, and picking the appropriately sized bone for your dog as well. So don't give something that too small that can get lodged in their throat mm -hmm. if your dog's a very fast eater. So um, definitely match the size bone to the, the size dog that you have. Right. And um, well, working with someone like me is, is, is a great way to determine what's appropriate yeah. um, for your dog. But, I mean, it's a lot of common sense goes yeah. into that as well. Okay. If you're concerned about... Um, the choking or if your dog doesn't have any teeth or for whatever reason you can't feed whole bones, um, you can get a lot of ground bones from uh, butchers and pet shops. They okay. will grind up chicken frames. So you can feed that as well as a source of calcium. And I mean, there's, there's calcium yeah, yeah. in all sorts of food, like That's there's true, calcium yeah. in greens and all sorts mm -hmm. of things. But um, you know, definitely bone is um, in there with the foods that you should feed to a dog. Yeah. Um, Moving on, like organ meats, mm -hmm. specifically um, liver, um, beef liver. Okay, good. Um, yep. Is really important for the uh, vitamins and minerals that are in there. And your dog doesn't need a lot of that liver um, in their diet either. We're talking like 10 or 15 grams for a small dog a day. Okay. Yeah, so small amounts of liver, organic, so, if, or, organic if mm -hmm. possible. Yep, just because that's that's the organ that um, filters. <laughs> just, yeah, that filters everything. Yeah. So if you if you can source organic liver, mm -hmm. I can source it here in Wyala, which is four and a half hours away from the next capital city. I can I'm source sure that... it here in my town of one thousand people. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So um, that's definitely an, an important food that I yeah. do recommend people feeding. That that's organic. Anything yeah. else? Whatever you. Whatever you can afford, um, go go with that. And yeah. basically, you just—I suppose—you would just buy it, chop it all up into lots, yep. and then freeze it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Chop it up into little cubes. And one one thing I have wondered: if you thaw out some meat and refreeze it, you're not supposed to do that with humans. Does it matter so much with dogs? Not really. No. No. They're a bit more hardy. And yeah, they are. They are a bit more hardy, and I think there are some studies coming out or that have come out that actually say it is okay to refreeze for humans but oh. I, I wouldn't i wouldn't do it personally yeah um but but definitely if um you can you can refreeze um dog food uh, dog food just i, mean, I wouldn't refreeze anything things, so. <laughs> well exactly that's it they, i mean their gut is has a ph of i think 0 0.8 which is just wow. 0.2 away from battery acid so <laughs> they've, they've, wow. they have a very acidic stomach which yeah. is why they can digest things yeah. like bones and raw meat and, mm. and that sort of thing things that if we would eat we would we would Feel probably over. die yeah yeah exactly okay um so how much um sorry you said 10 to 15 yeah. grams of organ meat yeah um just, sorry just did you say how amount. many did you say how much bones you didn't again exactly. again a very small amount it's, it's okay. going to differ between the between dog. dogs and yeah. whether your dog's a puppy or um, an adult dog puppies do require more um, bone or more cal uh, calcium and phosphorus mm -hmm. in their diet than yeah. adult dogs do just because they're growing so quick yeah um, and you do need to support them in that way mm -hmm. um, but I mean 
honestly, it's just pick, it, pick a, a small amount and feed it. Yeah. Um, going back to the bone, like if, if you notice your dog is a bit um, constipated, then that's probably you're feeding a bit too much of right. the bone. Or, so just re- reduce the amount. Okay. Um, there, there, there are a lot of tools that you can online that you can work out how much to feed specifically. But, you know, honestly, Joe, just, just pick an amount and, and feed it. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, other organs, which are really easy to source, like kidneys, brains, so you can add them in small amounts as well. Liver is the, the real the important one. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and from um, like beef and lamb and they're, they're probably the the better the okay. better liver to feed rather than chicken livers because I've noticed chicken liver doesn't contain as many nutrients as those bigger animals so okay yeah um more foods um so we've got the meat we've got the bone we've got the organ mm-hmm. that's generally um like a very basic diet but I like to go further and adding in some green veggies, mm-hmm. um, so your spinach, your kale, mm-hmm. broccoli, um, Brussels sprouts, any okay. of those veg that are um, really dark green, um, they, they're going to be very high in fiber, very mm-hmm. low in um, carbohydrates and starch. Mm-hmm. But fiber is really good for the dog's gut. Yeah. Um, and those greens are very high in vitamin K. Um Vitamin K is especially important for blood and liver health. And this, and, um, is, this is raw, are you saying? Yeah, raw, raw? steamed, mm-hmm. okay, so um, fer- fermented, as long as you're not cooking them to death, as long as yeah. you're, you're not boiling them for hours and hours and hours. It's yes. W- Whatever is easier, easiest for you. Mm-hmm. It's. I like to keep things easy. I don't yeah. stick to… If it's know, not easy, it won't get done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's it. Yeah, people are busy enough with kids and work yeah. and paying their rent and that sort of thing. The last right. thing they need to worry about or argue about is whether their dog should have broccoli or spinach or not. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they are the reasons why I feed those green vegetables. Um, you can add in other veg as well mm-hmm. if you want. Um, I like to stick stay away from pumpkin and potatoes, okay. sweet potatoes and carrots and anything that's too sugary or or sweet or starchy it's oh, fine peppy. to feed small peppy will be sad carrot is his favorite <laughs> thing in the world oh, if, look, if it, you yell out bacon he won't even look if you yell out carrot he runs <laughs> carrot where's the carrot yeah <laughs> yeah well, as, as a treat they're fine i mean okay. yeah. <laughs> well he doesn't have so, them every day yeah there are, I mean, there are some people that would they'll make a stew up with carrots and potatoes and sweet potato on pumpkin. Oh, no, and that's too have much. The, yeah. Yeah, and, and that that does get a bit too much. Still, it's it, it is going to be better than feeding yeah. a processed food, but True. it's um in in the long run, it's the, the it's, you're just adding in carbohydrates and starch into the dog's diet. Cause weight issues. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. The more you know, uh, uh, potato is going to be more caloric dense and kale mm. for instance so it's even just comparing the calories between the two yeah. it, it, your dog is going to yeah, be eating more than it should mm. Mm. so moving along so we've got just to recap your meat <laughs> your bone your or- organ mm-hmm. green vegetables yeah the next foods that i recommend are um in the seafood group so okay. small oily fish like sardines okay. mackerel um, tommies or, or herring, um, I think you, we, we call tommies and, okay. um, yeah. Do you buy herring. these, sorry, do you buy these fresh, yeah. raw, frozen in tins? How do you get them? Yeah. Again, whatever the, the, whatever the, is the best that you can afford, that's okay. what I'd recommend you feed. Uh, if I can, um, when I travel to Adelaide, I'll, I'll bring back some, uh, fish, some, uh, a fresh raw fish with mm-hmm. me, so I'll, I'll buy some sardines. I mean, we don't have, uh, we can't get sardines or, or mackerel or those sorts of fish here in Wyala. Okay. So um, when I do run out of the fresh, I'll go in onto the tinned. Yeah. And when selecting a tinned fish, I look for the one that has no added salt or the least amount of added salt, because mm-hmm. they do tend to put a lot of salt in these tinned fish just to help mm-hmm. them last a bit longer. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, 
um, those um, oily fish are very high in um, vitamin D, which helps mm. with calcium absorption, okay. and your omega-3 fatty acids, uh, okay. specifically the DHA and EPA, very important for uh, brain health and heart health and um, those um, specific omega-3 fatty acids are ones that you can't find in plant-based yeah. omega-3s. Yeah. 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 Um, mussels, so they're another food in that seafood family, which mm. is a food I like to add into the diet. Okay. Um, Never and that's would have for, thought of that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it's for manganese, so okay. um, for joint and ligament support. Um, so many dogs... Oh, it's sad to say this, but most dogs are overweight yeah. and and they don't have a source of manganese in their diet. If they do, it's pr it's probably some synthetic mm. supplement that's been put into their food. So a, a lot more dogs are getting ACO injuries because they are mm. overweight and don't have this. What's an ACO um, injury, sorry? A ACO, accrute, oh, okay. uh, acute crucial ligament. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they have ACL tears. Mm. I've seen dogs um, that are um, only one or two years old that are having these problems. Oh, wow. And, and even luxating paletas, which is like um, uh, the knee joint popping in and out. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And Very common with weight. smaller breeds. Yeah. From, from weight, not having enough of your like omega-3s and right. manganese in the diet. Hard to pinpoint that it's. The food that's exactly doing this, but it, it does have something to contribute to it. Okay. Yeah. Um, ginger, cinnamon, and clove are also sources of manganese. So if you okay. can't source mussels, uh, you, you can either buy it freeze dried or um, or dried as a powder, like green lip mm -hmm. mussel powder, or you can use um, ground organic ground ginger, Ceylon cinnamon, and clove. They're they're all rich in manganese as well. Interesting. Um, yeah. Okay. There's only a few more things that I have here, Joe, okay. and that is um, seeds, so mm. specifically sesame seeds, hmm. sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds. So um, they're high in vitamin E, which is an antioxidant. Yeah. And that's the most common thing I see missing in a dog's diet. Uh, you can also use uh, wheat germ oil, like mm -hmm. organic cold-pressed wheat germ oil. There's mm -hmm. no gluten in it. It's just the oil. Okay. And that's very rich in vitamin E. So... Um, um, it's also important for um, pregnant dogs as well. Ah, someone asked about that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So vitamin E um, can lead to um, a deformed – vitamin E deficiency yeah. can lead to deformed um, puppies. puppies and that sort okay. of thing right. and sometimes even – um, heart and, and brain issues. So right. um, that's definitely a very important one. And almost every dog I see has no source of vitamin E in their diet. It's mm. as simple as grinding up some um, sunflower seeds in your uh, oh, blender. Yes. Or, yeah, but yeah, I, I don't have one. But if, if, hey, if, if a thermi can, can grind up seeds and yep. turn them into a paste, then yeah, definitely sure. use that. So yeah. funny because someone mentioned – I would really like some Thermomix recipes for my dog. So there you go, book idea for you. <laughs> well, that's it. You might need to buy a separate bowl yeah. <laughs> for the dog's food. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, so those foods like the seeds and the wheat germ oil for vitamin E as an antioxidant. Yeah. Um, kelp, which is a seaweed, um, is important for thyroid health because kelp is high in iodine. Mm -hmm. Um. So good quality kelp, and I'm, I'm talking like a pinch in their food. They don't even need um, a lot. Just um, be wary if your dog has hyperthyroidism, an overactive mm -hmm. thyroid. You don't want to be adding any foods like that into their diet. And you would know your dog would um, – it would be hard for you to keep your – to keep weight on your dog and um, through regular vet checkups, you, you should know whether your dog has hyperthyroidism. Right. Okay. Yeah. But that's early caution with, with kelp. Um, last one's eggs, so fresh eggs, really mm. good as a whole food. You can feed the whole thing, white, um, yolk and all. Um, shells even, if, you're, if your dog will eat the eggshell, mm -hmm. um, but um, my dog won't. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't feed the eggshells as a, a sole source of calcium, mm -hmm. um, but definitely 
you can add it in there as like an extra crunch or treat. That's fine. Yeah. Um, the egg yolk itself is very rich in mm. vitamin D and choline. Yes. Uh, choline is a, a vitamin that is um, important for eye health. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So um, to just to round things up. So mm-hmm. meat, bone, organ, bulk of your diet, green veg, seafood, seeds, kelp, and egg. Okay. You don't you don't have to feed these foods. Every single day. Right. I mean, if you listen to if you're listening to this now, just you can write down those different foods mm-hmm. and add some into the bowl, say once or twice a week. Yeah. So over the course of a week, you, you can feed your muscles, you can feed them a few eggs, you mm-hmm. can put a pinch of kelp. Um, these nutrient these um foods will cover all of the nutrients that a dog needs in their diet. Yeah. Um, that's and that's a, a really good way how to get over that balancing concern. Yeah, which is something that um, you often hear, and that was also asked on the um, Facebook page. Yep. That they often are told when they ask their vet, "What foods should I give my dog?" Um, just by the premium vet pet food mm-hmm. because that's got all the minerals, everything all balanced. Yep. Yep. Um, but like Let me say. ask you this, um, Jo. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you know how much calcium your kids had yesterday? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. There's. Uh, can you? Does your bo- is your body lacking manganese? Well, and, what I'm thinking and is vitamin K in the moment. I'm thinking we need a packaged, um, balanced kids' food so I can just feed them dry biscuits <laughs> every day and I won't yeah. have to worry. <laughs> They've got one, Jo. It's it's called baby formula, and apparently oh. that's all your. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Hey. It says organic on the packet. It should it be good. Must be okay. And it says gluten-free That's, probably. <laughs> exactly. Right, must so, be okay. <laughs> yeah. So definitely there is a concern of balancing if you are missing crucial things in your dog's diet mm. like the calcium or your omega-3 um, fatty acids from oily fish and that sort of thing. Um, but your dog is going to have to be put on a very bland – boring diet for a long period of time for these deficiencies to, to occur mm. or it will have to be done at a crucial point in their life so if they're a puppy and growing mm. um but in all honesty uh, those foods that i mentioned I, I didn't it's not five or six pages long it's the very simple foods to add in yeah. and to feed that, that you can find at, at your supermarket even mm. so um the concern with um balance is not something that people should be worried about. Just honestly get in there and start feeding more fresh foods um, mm. to your dog. Start feeding more whole foods to your dog. Yeah. When I do a diet, like don't get me wrong, when I write a diet for a client, it is balanced to the T. Yeah. Like, the correct, by the book, correct calcium. So and if phosphorus you're worried rate, about it, so, then go to a canine nutritionist. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. you are, uh, yeah, definitely. Mm. But I don't emphasize on the importance of of that so much because yeah. even with the meat bone and organ so yeah, um they're getting yes. an amazing lot yes. of minerals yeah. and vitamins yeah. in that on paper on paper that's 80 85 percent balanced yeah. anyways yeah. yeah so and then a few veggies and you know yeah. like you're saying what about um some people say about fats what What's your take on what fats to add? Do they get enough fats just from the meat? They should. If you're feeding meats that are… And the are, seeds, I suppose, and things like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, with kangaroo, no. Like With kangaroo, you will have to add some fat back into the diet. Fat right. is very important. It's, yeah. what, it's, what, it's what delivers all those fat-soluble minerals to the mm. body, provides energy. So it is very important to feed your dog a source of fat. I guess it is in the um, egg yolks. And it is in yeah, the, the seafood, that's and it is in the seeds. <laughs> yes, yeah, that, 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 that's right. But um, so if, you, if you're feeding a dog, say very very lean meats, you mm. can add in like a teaspoon of ghee, mm-hmm. clarified butter. The best fat ever. Yeah, oh, I love it. I, so I use it for all my, for most of my cooking at Same. home. I, yeah, yeah. Um, coconut oil. I mean it's. I'm not going to say it's a miracle oil that that, cures, <laughs> that that cures every single ailment, but you can add that in as mm-hmm. a healthy fat if you have some at home. This is to lean meats, by the way. Yeah. Um, 
you can even trim some of the raw fat off of um, fattier cuts of meat, freeze them, and add them back into to lean cuts of meat. Right. That's, some, that's something that a lot of um, people do as well. But generally speaking, if you're feeding um, other meats like uh, pork or beef, mm. um, lamb, turkey even, that will have enough fat on there to okay. provide – the fat in a dog's diet. Is it okay to give your dog scraps of fat from your plate, like the, um, like when it's cooked, or no? Is that not a good idea? They, um, so they, because they're already cooked, a lot of the moisture is taken out of it, so they're going to be a lot more um, dense, like mm -hmm. in calories. So even feeding a, a small amount of, of cooked fat um, on top of their diet can uh, lead to. Um, obviously, your dog putting on weight. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't. I'd. I'd steer clear of it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't feed them too many. It's not. It's not to say that cooked fats are bad for your dog. Okay. But when they are cooked, they go rancid a lot quicker. So oh, they, okay. they they go they go off a lot quicker. Yeah. Um. I, um. So I would definitely avoid a lot of those cooked like table scraps and putting them into your dog's food. Another thing if to think about is that. 99 or 95 percent of the population are feeding dry dog food yeah. so the, the, the fresh feeders are only a very small proportion of those that are feeding um yeah um They're, fresh food to yeah. their dogs mm -hmm. so if you're adding in fatty offcuts into your dog's dry food that is an absolute nightmare case for pancreatitis um ah. to happen so what's happening is your dog's processing this very starch heavy food and it's yeah. processing all of the glucose and the body says hang on i've got all this extra fat and extra calories to store mm. i'm just going to store it like on the liver on the pancreas so yeah yeah things like liver disease pancreatitis um things that can actually come from adding in those fats in, into a diet that's mainly that's very starch heavy you have to remember a lot of the processed foods are um, so your kibble, your dry foods, so 45, 50, 55 percent refined carbohydrates. Doesn't matter if they're mm. if they're using grains or potatoes. This okay. grain grain free trend that's that's happening yeah. is a lot of the grain free foods are worse than the foods that contain grain because they are still 50 percent refined carbohydrates that are mm. in there. And that so your refined carbs gets process, processed into glucose, which is essentially sugar, mm -hmm. and that's what feeds things like yeast and um, you know, ear infections and rashes, and it's not doing anything to help nourish the dog. Right, it's a bit yeah. like going from um, wheat to gluten free, and it's just starchy, sugary packet mm. food. We talk about that quite often. It's not the same yeah. as a whole food diet. It's going exactly. to cause issues. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And no, so a question that, um, a comment that comes up a lot is, so dry food is balanced, complete, contains all the vitamins and minerals that dog needs. You know, why why feed something else when someone else has made the, the food for you? Mm. And my answer to that is uh, there's no way a food that is, one like, carbohydrate, one protein that's been highly rendered. Mm -hmm. A lot of the meat that the real meat that's in the that is displayed yeah. on the front of the pack, packets of um, dog food, uh, manufacturers will actually buy in pre-dried, so meat meals. So they, they they come in as a like a oh, dried yeah. meal, um, and they and they cook it again. So they, it's already cooked, and then they uh, cook it again through the extruder. Can't be much so left in it at all then. No, yeah. So what's what you end up with is uh, empty calories, calories like yeah. just the macronutrients. So you're gonna have protein, you're gonna have a bit of fat in there, and you're gonna have the carbohydrates. So and then I guess they add vitamins and minerals in, mm -hmm. do they? Yeah. Yep. They add in a thousand supplements wow. to make it balanced on paper, and no dog that is sick or trying to grow is going to be nourished from mm. that one carb, one protein, and a thousand supplements. It's like feeding your kids McDonald's, McDonald's. Yeah, I was and, thinking and that. saying, here, pop this wonderful organic multivitamin and that'll 
provide you all the manganese and yeah. iodine and everything. Then you can live you... on chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so um, that's where the, that's where the issue of balancing mm. is a bit skewed as well because yeah. anything can be balanced on paper. Mm. It doesn't take much for it to uh, to be balanced. It's just the quality of the ingredients that are going in there. Yes. Um, even natural and organic labelled foods, those organic ingredients are still getting processed at such high temperatures that it's going to ruin it hmm. uh, when, when it comes out. Definitely a lot more better options to, yeah. to feed in terms of processed food. You can get um, pre-made fresh food that's either raw or, or cooked, mm-hmm. less processing involved and they're still um, quite healthy for your dog. Mm-hmm. They also have freeze-dried and dehydrated foods as well. Yeah. Uh, and that sort of locks in the, a lot of the nutrients um, and keeps the food more shelf-stable long-term. So that would be an option if you had to have some time savers for now and then? Yeah, yeah? definitely. Okay. Definitely. That's it. They're the, they would be the better foods to feed. I'd mm-hmm. still highly encourage to add something fresh and wholesome in Veggies. to that food. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, some of your leafy uh, green veggies, um, cheap can of sardines even. If you're on a budget, mm-hmm. you can get them for $0.65 cents a can and the, uh, with very low sodium. Okay. Um, or even just adding in some lean meat mm-hmm. back into the foods um, to, to lower that um, amount of uh, carbohydrates. Yep. Mm. Um. One of the questions about the fats and the oils is fish oil, should you add that to the dog's food? But I suppose if they're having the sardines, you don't need to. No, not at all. And someone else said they add hemp oil, but mm. again, that wouldn't be necessary if and coconut oil and all of those kind of things. Yep. Okay. Yep. But look, you can add them on top. Just you can add some, yes, that's it. You can add mm. some hemp, hemp seed oil mm-hmm. on top of your dog's food if you want, or like a teaspoon of coconut oil if you feed. Okay. If you feel that the um, medium chain triglycerides in coconut oil are going to benefit your dog, what would, that's what. You, what kind mm-hmm. of things would you see in your dog to show that they don't have enough fat in the diet? Um, did you say constipation, or was that something? That's with that the, was bone. the bones. Okay. Yeah, so they're being, yeah. It's it's usually um, they will look malnourished because there's nothing driving those vitamins through the mm-hmm. through the body so there'd be um the the coat would look dull yeah um that have low energy mm-hmm. they're the sorts of signs okay. that, um yeah and um what, yeah what about probiotics should dogs mm-hmm. have probiotics every single dog is going to have some sort of gut trauma mm-hmm. whether um, whether it's from being fed a processed food, whether it's from the overuse of antibiotics mm. and, and just completely destroying what's in their gut. So, and, and there are other pl- plenty of other like environmental things, for yeah, instance. Just like with people. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So every, every single dog is going to have some sort of gut trauma. Mm-hmm. So I believe that um, feeding probiotic foods definitely will, will have – Definitely has benefit. Okay. Some benefits. My dog gets probiotics every single day. Um, I use a dog specific one because okay. it has strains specific to the dog's gut. Yeah. Or you can do things like fermented veg mm-hmm. for probiotics. Um, kefir. If yeah. you, if your dog doesn't have any um, yeasty problems, okay. uh, because there are with dogs, anyways. There are kefir is a prebiotic. It does have mm-hmm. some some lactose in there, so it, kefir can actually feed the um, yeast in dog's body. Okay. But um, you know, healthy dog for sure. Okay. You can add in um, again whole foods, preferably first your fermented veg and your other fermented foods. You can even ferment your um, sunflower seeds. Um, oh. I have a yeah. I have a. A, f- a friend that does that, she'll ferment sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds. So they're getting, it's like a double whammy. They're yeah, getting the dose of a great idea. vitamin E, heaps of zinc in pumpkin seeds have as you, well. Have you posted how to do that on your page at all? 
I haven't, but I will um, get us a will, link if you can, and we can put it. Yeah, in the notes. I'll get I'll get you a link. I'll, I'll link it to my friend's page because yeah. she's she's really into her fermented foods. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you so wouldn't not, you wouldn't think they need to add an actual probiotic powder or a capsule to anything? If you don't have access to those fermented foods, like if if you don't have the time to make them, then d- you're definitely adding in a dog specific probiotic supplement. Okay will be beneficial. Okay. Um, and the, the, yeah. you know how their stomachs are very acidic. That doesn't kill mm-hmm. off the bacteria before it gets where it's needed. It, you manage no. to get some through. <laughs> no. if, okay. if you these, – these strains of um, bacteria will survive mm-hmm. the dog's gut. That's why it's important feeding one that's specific to dogs. Ah, if okay. you're feeding – And you can just uh, get them out of vets. Yeah? Yeah, yes. Okay. Uh, or or – um, uh, Pet food store, okay, yeah, or yep, yeah, or or online. Um, definitely, there there are some some really good ones around. Okay, yeah. I'll just ask you a few specific questions about the foods that you've mentioned. How? Mm. Um, I'm not sure if you said how often to give dogs egg yolks. All right, so whole eggs, so mm-hmm. the whites and, oh, and the yolk. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Feed feed it all. It's all good for them. Yeah. Um. A uh, small dog, once or twice a week. Okay. Medium dog, two to three times a week. This mm-hmm. and a large dog, three to four times a week. Okay. Perfectly fine to feed. Well, yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, or or lightly cooked. If that's what we want to do. Like, okay. You know, in all honesty, it's it's about adding more goodness into their bones. It's not about arguing whether it raw or cooked is the okay. best way to go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, treats. What kind of treats do you give your dog? The only treat that I give Lexi now are um, uh, dehydrated uh, single protein treats. So it'd be yeah. like your small amounts of liver. Mm-hmm. You, you can you can overdo it with liver because it okay. is really rich. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, especially actually, especially with dogs that are prone to copper storage, oh. uh, Dalmatians, Westies, okay. Schnauzers. There's a whole list of breeds that actually they store. A lot more copper than they should, mm-hmm. and beef liver is really, really high in copper. Okay. So um, try not to overdo it with the liver. Mm-hmm. It is very rich for them as well. It'll just go. It'll give them the runs. It'll go straight through. Oh. So um, small amounts of liver is fine, but I'd, it's probably better as a as a treat just to give um, your dehydrated single protein mm-hmm. um, treats. But kangaroo jerky. Yeah. I give. Kangaroo tendons, so dried mm-hmm. kangaroo tendons. Um, yeah. Lexi absolutely loves them. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I, you know, honestly, I, I don't give too many treats to, no. to Lexi anyways. We she don't might do it have, very often, but it's yeah. just like now and then when we're teaching the dog a trick. <laughs> or yeah, something, or d- you know? yeah, for, for, for training, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, go for it. It's, it's good. Okay. Uh, having a high value food is really good as a reward for training. Yeah. Um, yeah, keep it as simple as possible. You try dehydrating your own if you mm, if you can. Definitely. That way you know exactly what's going in there. Yeah. Um, because the stuff in the shops, I've I've looked in there before, and I'm just like, it's yeah. really hard to find anything that has a single yeah. ingredient. <laughs> yeah. It'll it it'll, 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 it will say single protein, and you're like, oh, fantastic. You yeah. turn around the back, and it'll have. Yes, it's got that single protein in there, so <laughs> With other B, and then it'll have your, your sugar, <laughs> yeah, stabilizers, preservatives, numbers. It's like it's oh almost, my gosh, it's almost like they had to make it taste good to humans. It's like come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> doesn't yeah. need there sugar. Is, there is absolutely no reason for for a dog food or for a treat to have sugar in it. No, there, no benefit whatsoever. Mm. The, so that, that's being put in there purely for palatability for, for yeah. taste so yeah yeah it's uh, it just Silly. yeah I, I i i absolutely absolutely hate it joe yeah i bet yeah. and the colors and the flavors too yeah so all those foods that you mentioned if you are doing that kind of diet you probably wouldn't have any worry about their teeth being healthy but is there anything mm. that you would suggest in particular for teeth health so brush, physically brushing their teeth, if okay. you can, mm-hmm. is always going to be the best way to ensure the teeth are clean. <laughs> um, if, you, if your dog has bad teeth, don't be a, don't be a vet hater. Like Vets are not <laughs> evil. Go and get your teeth cleaned yeah. properly at the vet. 
-hmm. because that plaque and um, that bacteria can enter through their gum mm -hmm. and, and go into the bloodstream. Oh. And yet it, a lot of dogs that have bad dental health have um, heart problems like heart disease. Wow. So it's do not overlook dental health. It is absolutely important. Okay. So br brush your dog's teeth. If they're bad, go get just go get them cleaned up at the vet. Okay. And um, Someone asked hope, about dental sticks, but I have no idea what they are. Dental, dental sticks, sticks um, Joe. If you had a look at them, you would be gasp. horrified. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, it's, <laughs> yeah. So um, they do. I suppose they do clean your dog's teeth as being an abrasive because they're really hard, but they're generally you s complete starch that's been cooked uh, and right. really, really hard. So it's not. I would not recommend giving any of those dental treats. Mm. Stick to your raw meaty bones. Yeah. Um, stick Makes to brushing sense. your dog's teeth, um, and as a as a maintenance, you can even buy natural dental drops. Okay. Which um, you put on your dog's gums at night time, mm. and these drops contain things like manuka and uh, peppermint and mm -hmm. cinnamon oil. So they're really good at to, as a antibacterial, I suppose, and yeah. to help break um, break down the plaque and that sort of thing. So um, okay. that's what I would recommend to keep your dog's teeth healthy. Okay. What about natural worming? Is there anything? Some people use pumpkin seeds, um, mm -hmm. but one lady said that she tried that and her dog had three days of intense die-off episodes. So... Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I have heard that pumpkin seeds do work. Mm -hmm. um, the best way for natural worming is just check if your dog needs to be wormed in the first place. Mm. Yeah, there's no point using a preventative um, okay. or, sorry, or a treatment if your dog doesn't have worms in the first place. Okay. Again, this is about working with your vet mm -hmm. or holistic vet that can screen your dog's poop. So every six months you can get your dog's poop screened. Mm. Uh, it's called a, I think it's called a, facial, a fecal test. Mm -hmm. And they see if there are any worms in there. If there are no worms, then you're good to go for another six months. Because you don't actually how, need the, the, all that worming medicine every month. No. No, not at all. There you go. Um, if there are if there are worms, then yes, you can treat it naturally, or you can give you can target that specific parasite that's present rather than right. doing an all worm. And there are things you can do afterwards um, if you do need if your dog has an infestation. Sometimes you do need to give them the drug. Mm -hmm. And there are things you can do afterwards, like um, to, to sort of detox the dog after um, once they've had that, that medication, yeah. but. I've I've been getting Lexi's poop checked every six months, and she is four and almost four and a half now, and nothing has come up. Oh, that's good. Wow. Yeah. So that's probably the, the best way. Check to see if they have worms in the first place. If mm -hmm. they do, then yes, so by all means, you can you can um, try using natural yeah worming preventatives. What about preventing ticks and fleas? Is there any natural things you would suggest for that? See, with ticks, it's a tricky one. Mm. We get we, them we, up we, here a bit. Yeah, so that – I mean, I, I can't really comment on that because if you're, if you're not using preventatives and yeah. the, 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 your dog does get bitten by one of the bad ticks, yeah. then well, it's – It's not worth it. <laughs> it isn't. So yeah. um, there – um, and, uh, and to be honest, um, Joe, I'm not actually familiar with many natural tick no, preventatives. No, I haven't heard of any. Okay. There, there, there may be some around. With yeah. fleas, um, fleas like to attack a dog that has – that they like to attack dogs that have unhealthy immune systems. Okay. So keeping your dog on a good diet will – be will be enough to get rid of fleas but, mm -hmm. but if your dog does has have fleas it's just give them a natural flea bath and that, that's normally enough to to kill them yeah um garlic yeah and that, i mean it, garlic's fairly controversial and yeah i wondered that so garlic in low doses are fine to feed to dogs mm -hmm. um You'll need to have a like a, a Labrador sized dog eating five whole heads of garlic in order to have any adverse reactions. But <laughs> okay. honestly, if, if I ate five whole heads of, of garlic, yeah. I think I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have an upset stomach. So well, you know how they yeah. say it causes parasite die off. Um, mm. Even like when humans have broth with heaps of fresh garlic in it every day, that can cause great big die offs. So. 
and that's oh, not, okay. that would only be a few cloves a day. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess yeah. I guess you just it depends, but you'd have to have a fair bit. Um, with the onions, though, isn't that dangerous? Onion for dogs. Onions are definitely more dangerous than um, than garlic. So that's that sulfur sort of smell that te- gets your eyes all yeah. teary and stuff. Yep. Yeah. So that's uh, I think it's called thiosulfate. Okay. And that can actually damage red blood cells. So I would I I'd, I'd avoid onion. Plus the actual plant the onion plant itself. It, there aren't many benefits of feeding it to to warrant feeding it to to a dog in the first place. I mean, I, yeah. I love onion in my curries and stuff. But it's just for flavour, nice. really, yeah. For flavour, exactly. Yeah. But it's, so you're when, not really feeding it for a sole purpose like the other vegetables I mentioned are. When you make a broth for your dogs, do you want to just explain that? Because I think you – your dog. Sorry. Um, I think yep. you use kangaroo usually or do you do all sorts? I do all sorts, whatever okay. I can find. And I, yep. I do make bone broth for the local um, pet store here in Wyala as well. So, oh, wow. You buy yep. it frozen? Yeah, yeah we, just, we just freeze it. Uh, we'll, have it. we'll sell it fresh for a few days and mm-hmm. then um, we'll have some that's um, frozen as well. So I use um, any bones really. I, yep. I've made a batch with duck because I got hold of yeah. some, mm-hmm. some, yeah, some farm free-range ducks. So, yeah. um, so you can use any bones. Um, and just cook it the same way you would for humans, but omit the onions mm-hmm. and reduce the amount of the garlic that you put in it, or just don't put any garlic in there at all. If you're if you are really worried about garlic for dogs, so just just don't just put it don't, in. Yeah. Just don't put it in. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I use two methods that you can do. One's the slow cooker method or pressure cooker method, where you um, um, put some bones in a slow cooker with apple cider vinegar. Mm-hmm. And enough water to cover the bones and let it simmer for uh, 24 hours or so. Mm-hmm. Um, so then you um, you strain the bones, let it cool, remove the fat. Uh, use the you can freeze and store the fat and use it later to make tallow. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but um, then you, you just feed your dog the, um, the the jelly that's left over. So that's the fast method. You the just give it second some cold. Me- Sorry, I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Colds, especially in summer, that they'll, yeah. they'll love it. They no, love it cold. Idea. Or you can warm it up in winter. Yeah. Um, and that's something that you can add to processed dog food as well, just okay. to increase the the moisture in the food. Yeah. Um, just a uh, backtracking. Sorry for a for no, a, for okay. a second. That's okay. Um, because um, dry food is very low on moisture. Your um your dog's not going to be as hydrated as mm. they should be. Okay. Especially in in South Australia, we're we're the driest state in the driest continent on Earth. It's hard to believe wow. that, but we yeah. are. Wow! And uh, and um, our dogs are in a constant state of dehydration. Mm. So, like feeding, it's like eating crackers day in day oh, out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Crackers with the vitamins and minerals sprinkled on them. Anyway, <laughs> so going back to the bone broth, the second method is um, a method that my friend Emma. Um, Emma Rutherford, who is a nutritionist in the UK, mm-hmm. she told me this method, and she will um, actually crush the bones before mm-hmm. um, putting them in. And she won't use a slow cooker, but she, so she'll crush the bones, and she'll just put them on a low um, simmer mm-hmm. for two hours. Yep. And and generally, that's enough for the broth to actually gel. Yep, that's generally how because, much I, I usually do about two to three. Okay, well, there yeah. you go. I'm not familiar with your method, but I'm sure even if people use your method that's in your book or on your um, website and just omit yeah. the, any, yeah. any onions or garlic or, or the rest of the veggies, if, uh, I'm not sure if you add veggies in there, but you can add, you mm-hmm. can add herbs and that sort of stuff. It's, it's fine to add in okay. there for your dogs. There's, there's no herbs or spices or anything that are bad for them or? Um, the, so it's onions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would I'd stay away from rosemary if your dog okay. has epilepsy. Right. Um, that's just as a precaution. I know there are some people that say that it it has nothing to do with epilepsy, but just to be safe, I hmm. I, I don't want to recommend people feeding rosemary to their dogs if, okay. and and that they have adverse reactions. Yeah. But um. Herbs like 
parsley, coriander, um, thyme. You can definitely add in. Mm -hmm. um, they should be fine. Okay. I I normally do a separate batch of broth for my dog, anyways. Yeah. So same. I just I just have it plain. Mm, same. <laughs> and that can be for her. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Mm. Um, another thing about foods to avoid. Is there any? Is it okay to let dogs have fruit, or is that going to give them the runs? Or small amounts are fine. Okay. And I mean, like two and a half to five percent of their overall bowl. Yeah, it's so. not something that you would do as a general rule, but they may get mm -hmm. a little bit now and then. Mm. I mean, you do get dogs that just love to chew on apples and that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, that's right. Ours just loves anything crunchy. So yeah, sometimes yeah. Look, it's, my husband feeds him bits of apple. <laughs> yeah, look, that's, that's going to be okay. But okay. Um, I wouldn't overdo it and give no. them a big banana smoothie. No, with, no, no. You know, yeah. <laughs> so in small amounts, yes, it's, it's absolutely fine to give them small amounts of fruit. Um, if your dog has a yeast problem, yep. so smelly ears or um, – Mm. Red belly and that sort of thing. I would avoid any anything. sugar, yeah, so okay. anything that's sweet, carbs yeah. or sugars. That, that's mm. what I have to do with my with with Lexi. Okay. Um, it was very un unfortunate, but Le Lexi was desexed at 16 weeks old. So, oh, wow. yeah, and essentially, it's it's like a small child having a vasectomy. Like, so a, a, hyst a hysterectomy. hysterectomy. So they're having having their um, sex organ removed at such a young age. So. Wow. I was unfortunate that happened to her, but it, mm -hmm. again, that's like another ethical issue. There are safer ways to dissex your dogs. There's a procedure called um, ovary sparing spay, mm -hmm. where they just, I think they just tie the tubes or something. I'm yeah. not sure. Look it up. But there are safer procedures, but generally mm. the, the traditional way is just to re remove everything. Mm. So uh, because that happened, her private bits didn't form properly. Right. And she has um, vaginitis, mm -hmm. so the dog sort of version of vaginitis. So okay. any excessive or any um, starch that I put into her diet um, will um, result in like a, a bad response. So mm -hmm. she she definitely has high fiber veg in her in her foods, but mm -hmm. um, if you have a dog that has any sort of yeast issue then I would avoid um, fruits, yeah. starch, prebiotics, that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah, there was yeah. Um, a couple of questions about the the yeast and the um, – mm. let's see, where is it? I think it was the ears. Mm -hmm. asked about ear infections. Yeah. That's usually, is that usually yeast? Yes. Yeah. So the, it's either going to be ear mites, mm -hmm. environmental or, um, or food-related – Okay. If you've looked under, um, if the vets looked under a microscope and checked the ear for mites, so there are no mites there, then you um, you can if you can rule that out, then definitely make some dietary changes. Mm -hmm. um, and I, um, even with grain-free foods, a lot of going back to the grain-free mm -hmm. foods, a lot of dogs that have been eating a grain-free food for like, yeast and itchy skin problems. Um, they continue to have problems because that grain-free food is still, um, yeah, over mm. 40, 50 percent um, starch. Mm. So um, definitely taking them off that food and putting them onto a more wholesome diet will help in order um, to, to reduce the amount of um, sugar that the yeast has to feed on in the body. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that, that's definitely something that they can do, um, and of course. If there's pollen and stuff around, your dogs are going to start getting the itchy eyes and itchy skin anyway. So that's an, an environmental thing that um, that can occur. So we've probably covered a lot of um, issues just by saying this is the diet that you need to be on because it would be the same answer for most things. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's questions here about itchy skin and grass allergies, there's diarrhea, constipation, there's arthritis, anxiety. I didn't even think about dogs getting anxiety, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that's a thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all of these things, would they all be improved by just following this diet or is there something particular? I guess if there's something not working, then they need to go mm. and talk to someone about it. But Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. with the grass allergies, you can add things like um, quercetin, 
which is like a natural antihistamine, mm. um, and just to stop the itchiness, or just have some baby wipes ready and wipe your dog mm. every time they come inside if there's, if there's high pollen in the area. Okay. And diet does have a major part to play in in health, but it's it's not the complete picture. Yeah. Um, dogs are more exposed to chemicals in the environment than we are because they're essentially grass. when they're walking around naked mm, and they're, if you're using mm. um, bleach and chemicals to clean your floor mm. your dog's going to be walking on it walking on that and licking their yeah. um their paws yeah um there's also um even exercise regimes yeah a, a lot of dogs they just stay inside all day they might have a run around the backyard but really it's it's not taking out extra time for deliberate mm. specific exercise um so they're under exercise they're getting um exposed to the environment um actually i was i was listening to your podcast with um damien christoph yes. um, chiropractor and Something that resonated, something that he said that resonated with me was how the nervous system is all connected. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's why having adjustments can, having chiropractic adjustments can help mm-hmm. clear a whole heap of things that are going on. And yeah. I believe it because yeah. I went through that same thing when I injured my back. Yeah. Um, something that's happening with um, dogs and a lot of owners aren't aware of is when they let the dog's nails grow too long, mm-hmm. they end up curling down and the dogs are essentially walking on their nails and that curves their spine mm. and it doesn't allow um, the, the nervous system to, to, to be freed up and um, that that can also be something that's contributing to a lot of dogs that have like arthritis and stiffness and that sort mm. of thing. Okay. So you wouldn't even think that no. you know, keeping your dog's nails trimmed would be such an important part of their um. How often should uh, that be their done? Health. I I try to do it at least every two weeks. Wow. Every, yeah. Oh, mine's obviously it, too it, long de- it depends. <laughs> well, it depends. Some some dogs, they won't need it because okay. for, some, for whatever reason, the, do- the nails don't grow. Yeah. Alexi's nails, I, I can blink and they've, they've grown. Oh. And do you have yeah. your own trimmers or you take them to the vet yeah. for that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've got my own trimmer and it's yeah. about keeping the dog calm and yeah. desensitizing them to the clicking noise or the, the Dremel noise if you want to use one of the, the Dremels yeah. to, to file down the nails. But okay. even things like that, um, you wouldn't even think no, that. No, you wouldn't. It, it, yeah. You can be giving your dog as much glucosamine and chondroitin and muscles to support their joints. Yeah. And, but if there's something physically going wrong, it's not going to yeah, improve. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So definitely with these issues, um, the anxiety, for instance, mm-hmm. um, training, has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Um, feeding um, lean meats are naturally high in tryptophan, which is mm. a calming amino acid. Mm-hmm. So um, that can also help. Things like chamomile and ginger okay. would definitely help with calming. But um, with anxiety, it's usually um, a training thing that okay. the owner has to work with with a with a dog trainer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Arthritis. It goes back to feeding things like your muscles, um, especially greenlet muscles, which are rich in glucosamine and chondroitin, mm. which is really good for the joints. Yeah. Vitamin C is also another good thing to, to supplement for arthritis. Mm-hmm. Um, you can use rose hips for vitamin C. Yeah. Um, there is a company that, that's the one specifically to for dogs, so mm. um, a supplement, I mean a vitamin C supplement. Okay. Um, yeah, that covers a few of those. That's good. Um, two more questions, and then I'll, then I'll let you go. <laughs> okay. No so worries. Building up muscles for dogs, um, for the yeah. very active, muscly bull breeds. Yeah. Um, this yeah. lady right. said that a lot so of people that, use grain and molasses, which is not great. Based yeah, product. so that's basically molasses is sugar. Mm-hmm. I think it's made with, yeah. yeah. So it's, I think it's made with corn or cane sugar. Yeah. Anyways, and grains, yeah. So, yes, like they, they're using those foods to increase the calories in the dog diet but Mm. um not and obviously they will have some sort of growth because of the extra calories but what you want for lean muscle growth is to feed a lot more of your your lean meats Mm -hmm. um 
to inc- and just feed them more food, like in volume. Mm-hmm. You, and um, like humans, we need to exercise and lift weights or mm-hmm. even do body weight exercises for us to increase muscle mass. The same thing can be applied with dogs. I, so I went and saw, um, had a consultation with a canine conditioning coach. So they're pretty much like a personal trainer for dogs. Okay. And that was one of the best things I've ever done for, um, for Lexi because she um, explained to me the importance of exercise and actual um, physically working out your dog's um, muscles. So mm. with, the, with these really um, strong um, braids, you can add some like a weighted vest on mm-hmm. them so they're carrying more weight with them as they're doing the walks. Yeah. Walk up um, incline, so walk mm-hmm. up up and down hills if you can. That will work out the shoulders. Mm-hmm. And you um, can even do stabilization exercises on mm-hmm. uh, balancing discs for them and stuff. Oh, so, they uh, probably think that was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. And these are all I – mean, I, I didn't know about any of these things. This is something that I discovered consulting with um, – my friend who does canine conditioning. Okay. And um, there you go. Someone even that does would, that. Amazing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that will definitely help build up the the muscle mass. Yeah, lean protein and and just more training, but with okay. weights. Yeah. Yeah. What was the other question, Joe? Detox baths for dogs, <laughs> which yeah. is pretty funny because in gaps that's a big thing and that's been um, helpful for a lot of people with skin issues, but and also with um, relaxation. This, Do you use this is for um, a dog who's itchy and has been okay. on prednisone yeah. for a whole year? Yeah. 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 So in gaps, do you use the Epsom salts? Yeah. So she yeah. takes the dog to the ocean, and uh-huh. that obviously, that's the best way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Swimming's really good for mm-hmm. uh, exercise and that sort of thing. Definitely, yeah. the ocean's really good in terms of. Um, I know this might sound a bit like woo, but like the energy that the, the energy that the ocean gives as well yeah. is really good for healing. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can do Epsom so- soaks on the dog's paws. Ah, oh, so, that would um, be good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so that's definitely something that will help. Okay. Um, and with with the itchiness again, have a really close look at the dog's diet. Yes. Um, and the other things that I mentioned before, mites, environment. Mm. And maybe it might even be worth, if none of those things work, doing um, like a food test, a food yeah. intolerance test yeah. with your dog or a process of like a, like a food elimination sort of mm-hmm. thing as well can help as well. Well, this lady's thankfully found a holistic vet that she started going to and the, do- uh, the vet told her to feed the dog basically a GAPS diet, which is what their family is on. So she said, it's so good. Beautiful. <laughs> so she's just yeah. starting that. So that's good. Yeah. And that's pretty much all the foods that you've talked about. So, awesome. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Gaps that's dog. <laughs> I yeah. always say I think my dog needs to be on gaps too because he gets the itchy, itchy paws from the grass and, you know, so that's, yeah. that's what we'll have to do too. So we'll just finish off, but I just wanted to ask you, is there any um, particular, um, like, I don't want to make this a product placement type of thing, but, Mm -hmm. you know, for washing the dog when they're itchy and, you know, just natural, have you seen any really good brands? Mm. What do you Uh, use for, like, just Well, Colloidal Silver. Oh, really? Yeah, Colloidal Silver topically is is good for itchy skin and it's great because it doesn't um, sting either. Yeah. Yeah, so um, definitely... Um, good to know. I'd recommend that. I, okay. I don't. I can't think of any brands off the top of my head. Okay. There, and find a brand that doesn't contain all those sulfates and parabens and that sort of yes. thing. There are more, more and more even dog food, uh, sorry, dog shampoo brands that are removing those oh, good. Um, yeah. irritants from mm. the shampoos. Yeah, chamomile, chamomile is very soothing for itchy skin. Um, Aloe vera as well is very soothing for, for itchy skin. Okay. But um, ideally, we want to be working the like health from the inside out. Yes. Um, but, yeah, in terms Sometimes of like, re- the, relieving. Yeah. 
Yeah, th- th- that's what I would recommend. Those no no brands. I'm sorry, Joe. No, I can't no, that's think all right. Of um, but it, it is just important, like you say, with detoxing your home because your dog's walking around on the floor. I think that's a good point to make, and also yes. detoxing there anything that you wash the dog with, make sure it's not a toxic brand. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I use a, I use a brand that has no toxins in my home, and I yeah. I know that you do as well, Joe. Yeah. So it's um. That'd be even for your um your skin family, your human mm. family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that that'd be one of the best um steps that you can right. take. Yeah. Washing powder if you're washing your dog's yeah. um bedding That's and stuff. True, yeah, all of that needs um, to be non toxic. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Having a good water filter. Yeah. I use I use the same water filter as you do. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Zazin. Yes, that's yeah. the one. That's yep. The one. So we we use that for for um. The dog is for nice. our family, yeah, for our dog and, and for yeah. us. Okay. So these are all different things that, that you can do to yeah, um, that's good. improve things. Well, um, just since we mentioned the non-toxic products, um, Walida, who does our sponsorship for the podcast, has a gift pack for you. So um, afterwards I'll get some details from you to send that to you also. Oh, for me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, we'll either just um, contact us and say we want to give a gift pack to anyone that comes on your show. So there you That's go. That's lovely. <laughs> we just, I had nice. a look on their website to see if they had any um, like pet care products because a lot of these, you know, non-toxic um, companies do, but they haven't. So, you know, we just have to suggest it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm sure there's a demand for that. that yeah. yeah there will be. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thank yeah. you so much. Wow. We got through a lot of questions and we did go over an hour. Sorry about that. But no worries, um, Joe. I think that'll well, be the, really the, helpful. Yeah. The, the one thing that I'll leave with is that, mm-hmm. that no matter what you believe, like it doesn't matter if you believe in you know, raw or cooked okay. or canned or whatever, dogs have a biological right to be able to eat real food. Yes. So that's – that's what we have to work towards, not what is right or wrong. Mm-hmm. And it just saddens me that more and more dogs aren't able to tolerate real foods because their um, their whole body is being destroyed from these processed foods. So yeah. um, if you keep that in mind, that it's their actual right as an animal, mm. their biological right to be able to eat real food, and try to feed them as much of those wholesome foods as you can, mm. then um, that's, that'll be the way to go. That's good. Thank you. Um, can you just let everyone know where they can find you online? Sure. Um, if you just search up my name, uh, David Ajuls, D A V I D A G I U S dot com dot A U, that's my website. Okay. I'm also on. Um, uh, Facebook and on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, if you again, if you just search my name, um, so it'd be David underscore Canine Nutritionist mm-hmm. on on either of those things. I'm sure if you just Google my name, yeah. like David Ages Dogs, I'll, I'll come up. That's the best way <laughs> place to. That's the best place to to, to find me. It's easiest. And and I do um like I do give a lot of um free and, and helpful as much free and helpful advice as I can as well. So if there is something that concerns you, feel free to send me an email or, or oh, send me nice. an inbox. Yeah. Thank and you. um I'll try to help people as much as I can. Um obviously if there's a lot more work involved then I do have very reasonable fees That's for great. people to work with me one on one. And I, I I do I put in a lot of time and effort into the individual dog when I work with people one on one. That's really helpful. Okay, we'll put the links on the show notes as well so that anyone can click through to those. But um, that's awesome. I've learned heaps and I'm sure everybody else has too. So thank you so, so much for all your time. You're very welcome, Joe. You're very welcome. All right. Well, you have a great weekend and um, I'm sure we'll be on your page checking out your awesome photos of dog food and ideas and tips. Woo-hoo. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> you too. Thank you so much. See ya. Bye. 
This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst the Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of the Wellness Couch podcasts.